Hi, and welcome to Seriously Pointless Conversations About Culture, your seriously pointless podcast about all your nerdy and geek things. And this is your Seriously Pointless News for June. Uh, I hope you guys like the new intro. We're trying a new kind of um, segment, or not segment, a new type of uh, episode style where we do uh, an episode for news during one one episode of the month and then the second episode of the month we're going to be doing a review a more in-depth view uh we felt like maybe this is going to give you guys a little more bang for your buck and so and a little bit more you get a little more more james and i time what do you think about that sound pretty good james i think it'd be great yeah spread the love around as it were that's uh so you've heard james's dulcet tones already so you know james is here with me how you doing man i'm doing very well I just got back from a trip to Mexico, so I'm feeling refreshed. Yeah, I see the sun in your face. You have a glow, a tan, as it were. I know. I'm not the killer of a vampire at this point. What are you talking about? I, I am <laughs> super bronzed. What are you talking about? I've always... <laughs> I say programming has not done anything for your skin tone. I'll say no, that. <laughs> no, not at all. I, I think it's done worse. Than, I think it's like, so, funny story. You actually say that. I was downstairs, and we were kind of like... We, were, we just had a big kind of a crunch period for, for work. And I, I was in the middle of something. I was like, I got to take a break. And I was like, what do I want to do? And I was like, I want to go outside and stand in the sun. I saw I literally go out my basement door <laughs> and I just stood there like a, like a flower and I put my arms out and I'm like, absorb the sun. I was like, I need some vitamin D. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's, it's definitely not, it's definitely not a benefit. And I have a feeling though. So I am, I have a feeling that my, my son is going to be, you've seen him. He's like a pale yeah. little white boy. I have a he feeling. He looks gonna, just like you when you were younger. <laughs> I know. And that's the bad thing is I think he's going to have the same kind of skin complexion, that fairness. And so I'm trying to get him out in the sun without like throwing SPS 50 on him and like, you know, hats and all this stuff as much as possible. So he can kind of get used to it mm-hmm. and hopefully not burn. So, but uh, it, it is good. So, but we are definitely in the midst of that transition from spring to summer. And I mean, there's just so many activities. Like you said, you're going on vacation. We've got one coming up here uh, towards the beginning of uh, uh, actually, you guys are going to be going along with us over to this. Yeah, I think we're jumping in at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. So Mm -hmm. I hope everyone else is also having an awesome start of their summer. Um, if you guys are going anywhere, having really fun trips, tell us about them. If you guys are going to conventions and things like that, let us know. If you want to send us pictures, I would love to see some convention pictures because I have not been to a good convention in probably 10 years. I mean, it's been forever. It's been a while. There's the there's the convention in our town, but it's really, I don't know. <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's a small town convention. It's, it's, a, it's a small town convention. There is actually a lot of vendors that come down from St. Louis, so oh, yeah. you can get some pretty cool art, but... I'm looking forward to float trip again this year, which is kind of a Southeast Missouri thing. So I don't know. If so do you want to describe what that is for the folks that aren't from Missouri? <laughs> so we have lots of rivers around here and most of them are spring fed and very cold and actually very nice in the summer. Mm-hmm. So what you do is you pay a company to drive you like nine miles up the river. You get the inner tubes of tires. So like great big uh, black inflatable dike donuts and you sit in them, and you get in the water, and you float down the river for eight or nine miles. Uh, you Typically, can. there is a large amount of adult beverages there, consumed. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> usually get drunk. And usually get usually... very drunk, and you'll pack a cold lunch in a cooler, which you can put in another tube. And it's a great time. <laughs> you, and you might possibly fall asleep in said tube or raft, and you'll get an awful sunburn, and you'll be like, that was fun. Let's do it again next week. <laughs> and you do. And I've never done any of those things, so I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what are you talking about? We would never, we would never pass out ever. I I vividly remember your brother-in-law getting an awful sunburn on like his eyelids, I because he felt like he passed out one time. Yeah, and his belly too. Like it was, he had blisters going down his chest. Oh, so bad. I, I was felt... I was going after him with a needle the next day, trying to drain them, and oh my gosh. <laughs> That sounds ah, oh, that sounds so so painful. Oh, that's awful. But, but yeah, so many so many exciting things for summer, and we'll keep you guys up uh, up to speed about what we've been what we've been doing, what we've been watching too, right? Or what we've been playing. So I know you, James. You kind of got uh, you're stuck at home for a little bit. So I'm sure you've been ingesting some stuff, right? Yes, uh, my wife and I have been stuck at home. I got COVID again. It happens. Um, but thankfully, today is the last day from isolation, so that's good. Yeah. But uh, we've been playing some co-op games. Uh, Space Alliance from the Far Out came out on the Game Pass, and yeah. we'll give that one a shot. 
it is a nice little game where it's up to four players, either local or online co-op. And you are running like this little space liner airplane service thing. So you have to like fly through and negotiate asteroid belts. You are taking on customers. You have to like keep the ship fueled up and clean. And it's fun. And you're trying to get to like this uh, Gambulon 5 in the vacation sector to make lots of money. So the way you... It's, it's kind of like Overcooked meets Faster Than there Light. It's a lot of fun. I think the roguelike elements could use some more because Kelly and I played it for five or six hours one afternoon. We had a great time. But then at that point, we kind of felt like we had run out of stuff to do. Like there wasn't enough so, events and things in the game to keep it going. Is but. it is it is it like a full release or is it because it's on Game Pass, right? So it's not like this Steam is the full release on Game Pass. Yeah, it came okay. out on the 8th on the Game Pass and I think it came out on Steam the next day. Okay. So that would be a fun one for us to get with the friends and whatnot. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, I was kind of watching a video of it, and then I saw it was on Game Pass. I was like, oh, I might you know, hop on this. But I, I'm I'm kind of going deep into an RPG land type thing. So yeah. Um. So I know you guys have been playing uh the, the Space Liner or what's it called again? I apologize. Um, it is called Space Lines from the Far Out. But Space Lines from the Far Out, that's what it was. Okay. That one didn't really quite scratch the itch we were looking for, so mm-hmm. we actually got a different one, which has been out, it's actually been out since like 2018 or something, it was called oh, wow. uh, Catastronauts. Huh, that sounds where interesting. It's kind of like a Star trek type thing where you are... You are like astronauts or like space cadets or whatever, and you're fighting a war against these aliens. And you have these levels where you're in these little ships and you're trying to repair the ship, put out fires, fire the guns, you know, take the bombs and throw them out into space, whatever you have to do so that you live and the other guy dies. And that one felt a lot more like um, like Overcooked, where it's frantic, it's chaotic, you all get oh, really yeah. angry at each other. And it requires a lot of organization and thinking to finish the levels. I think that's going to be my new couch co-op game. Looks so like... Next time some... we get four people over, we'll have to play it. It's actually... Oh, yeah. This, this totally looks like a you and Kelly game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at this. I'm like, this... this, this Yeah, it, it looks really fun, though. It's kind of like... Almost looks like a, a mix between Overcooked and... Um, oh, uh, FDL a little bit. So... Yeah, it, it it's fun. And it, it has that chaotic, oh my gosh, the world is burning down feeling that you get when you play Overcooked. Oh, I love I love that they have, it's like you almost have pseudo uh, Star Trek uniforms. <laughs> oh yeah, and the first player is indeed a red shirt, so that's always well, fun. <laughs> that's, that's what you have to go for. So that's what you've been playing. What have you been uh, watching? Have you guys been watching anything at all? Oh, just the spring anime. Um, anything scratching your itch at all? Uh, I've got to say that the same stuff we talked about last time has continued to be good. The Skeleton Knight in Another World has yeah. been great. Oh, which one was it? The uh, I really liked that Spy one. X Family. Spy X Family has been a big highlight for the year. Yeah, Spy X Family, I'm enjoying that one actually quite a bit. Um, I, I just started re- I started watching some of the episodes. I let it get the the skeleton I one. I let it get about three episodes ahead of me because um, unfortunately I don't really have time to watch it on my own. And when we watch stuff at night, Jackie and I, she's really into the Marvel stuff and the Disney stuff. So she really liked, we would, we actually watched um, the new Obi-Wan series, uh, the yeah. Obi-Wan Kenobi series that came out. And then they just started, she really likes the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. I was, I'm actually pleasantly surprised with it too. Um, the, uh, and I don't want to ruin anything for anybody because it has a lot of the, it, it, it does a lot of really good world building in it. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I, it's, it's, it's what I want in that world. It's basically taking some of the old canon and bringing it f- to the forefront and saying, Hey, these are the things that you love about the old star Wars, the original trilogy, but we're also kind of try and fill in those gaps between the prequels and the original trilogy and okay. kind of show how we got from point A to point B. But all I got to say is I saw an amazing meme <laughs> the other day. It goes, <laughs> if I ever get stranded somewhere, don't let me get stranded on Tatooine because seven years, like it was like, it was like or no, 13 years on Tatooine. And they showed pictures of like 
Lars and uh, Lars and Aunt Beru, and like they're <laughs> pictures from the prequels and then to the, the originals, and then like they do uh, Obi Wan Kenobi, and it's just like <laughs> sand be rough on the skin. <laughs> it's, just, like, it's so good. It's, I mean, have you ever like? Like really looked at like old farmers who have been like been out in the sun their whole oh, life. Yeah, dude. I mean, sun is the worst on your skin. It's oh, dude. horrible. Oh, dude, my grandpa, my grandpa Whitenbender, it leather skin. I'm, I, I, you know, he was a bricklayer and a farmer. So yeah. just watching him, dude, I, 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 I don't know how he did it. I remember working with him, working a couple uh, summers in the in the peach orchard with him, and on the farm, getting up at like three thirty in the morning. And I remember real. I got I figured out real quick. This is not the life for me. Manual labor <laughs> is not my. I, I can do manual labor, but I do not need to be out in the sun. I will not be out here. Uh, so it it's definitely takes a certain kind of person and a certain dedicated kind of person, somebody that's really enjoys it. So kudos to all the farmers. I'm gonna stay inside and be a pale skin, you know, you know, programmer. That's what I'm. That's my goal in life <laughs> at this point. So. Um, but other than that, we actually started watching um, the Miss Marvel show that just came out uh, like three days, three days ago. It's oh, the Kamala wow. Khan story. It's really good. I, I actually really enjoy it um, so far. I want to see if they can hold that momentum. It's so it's it's a really kind of interesting thing that they have. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of it or not, if you guys mm-hmm. even watching no. the Marvel shows. But it's uh, the girl's name and it is Kamala Khan. She plays a i believe she's pakistani immigrant her mom and dad are pakistani immigrants that came to america but she's like super obsessed with like uh superheroes specifically captain marvel Um, okay and she wants she kind of has that daydreamer kind of thing and her mom is always trying to pull her down you know to earth a lot and i it's really funny like as you as i'm watching this i'm like oh she draws a lot. She kind of doesn't do her homework. I'm like, this sounds a lot like me. You know, just like <laughs> doing this kind of stuff, like making dumb jokes, oh. kind of being a little bit of a, a goofball. Uh, so I can kind of connect with that a little bit. But she actually ends up in the first episode, she actually gets powers. And I don't want to ruin it, ruin it for him because I've read the comic and the comic is amazing. It looks like they're kind of going that route with it. And okay. I, I will tell anybody this. If you've read the comic, uh, I would highly recommend starting to watch this because if this is the way they're going with it. It is, it's got so much heart in the comic and it is so good. So it, it doesn't matter if, you know, you're not, you know, if you're not, uh, you know, Pakistani or Middle Eastern or even a female, just the, just the family dynamic of this, watching it, how much like her parents love her and like end up supporting her over all this. It's, it, it's, it's gorgeous. I love it a lot. I'd highly recommend it's it. It's nice to have a superhero with like parents that actually care. Actually, give, oh, absolutely. You can tell like right off the bat, like her mom cares so much about what she's doing because this is, this girl's essentially a teenager. So it's really good. So I would highly recommend anybody uh, okay. if they enjoy stuff like that. So um, check that one out. Yeah. Uh, in regards to playing stuff, so I finally finished uh, Turn Up Boy Commits Tax Evasion. <laughs> it took me three days to get around. I, I played like maybe like 30 minutes here, 30 minutes there. Mm-hmm. That is the most bizarre, bonkers game I have <laughs> ever played, but it made me chuckle so much with all the little references they had in there, like all the dumb little things they did. Oh, yeah. Um, the mayor is awful but amazing at the same time i love him to death <laughs> i i liked getting the streamer a tier three sub <laughs> yes i was like oh why why do we have to get why is it a sub it's an actual like sandwich like why do we have to do this <laughs> it made no sense but yeah that was a fun little game i finished that up and so i was kind of waffling a little bit between whether i wanted to dive headfirst into tunic because i maybe put like a couple hours into it i want to play it I just don't feel like I have, I want to sit down and really dig into it. So I decided oh, I'll, I'll pick a little bit more of a game I can pause and pick up here and there. So I started playing Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire, mm-hmm. which I actually recommended to Kelly last episode. Yeah. And I, 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 I'd only originally played maybe like another, like I said, another two hours of it earlier, but I really started digging into it. I probably have got like 16 hours into it now. It's really good. If you like, D and D style RPGs, it's it's for you. I mean, it's it's straight out of like that kind of you know D, uh, Dungeons and Dragons world or Pathfinder world where you can 
you make your own character, but you also have a class, I have a group of uh, uh, people that you pick up throughout the way. Like, I have a swashbuckling rogue uh, that's voiced by Matthew Mercer. Uh, he's nice. my, yeah, I have him in there. I've got a arc or a wizard. Um, how much you would call him? Basically, like a uh, like a wizard fighter hybrid. You can like multi class people. Uh, he's an elf, and you have like a cleric gal that I did. I've got a paladin already. But there's apparently there's like twenty people that you can pick up along the way. Wow. Do, like side quests and stuff like that, and you can just mix and match. But you can have like a total of like five people in your party. I think it's what it is. It kind of sounds like so, Chrono Cross. It, it is. It really is. But you can really customize your individuals. They're like gear and uh, leveling them up. Like, do you want to have them have specific skills? Just like a regular D and D thing, you know. So yeah, I'm really, cool. I'm really digging it. Um, I just, I, I'm, I will, pro- I might be talking about this game for probably the next like four or five episodes <laughs> because this is how much it, it has in it. So I might have to pick it up, I'll put it down for a little bit, maybe if I want to talk about something else, maybe. So, but yeah, that's I've been really enjoying that quite a bit. So. But yeah, those are the games and movies we've been playing with. Um, is there anything else you want to talk about before we start digging into the news, James? No, let's get into it. I'm eager to talk about some of these things. I I understand. So first off, guys, so the, kind of a breakdown of what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be doing the first half of the segment, or the first half of the news is going to be about games. And then the second half, we're going to be doing about movies and anime. Uh, so kind of, kind of, So we're going to keep that kind of format, hopefully. If you don't like that, just let us know. So the first big story we've got going on um they have a video game called the multiverse has been announced uh have you seen this yet james i have seen some clips from it yeah it's pretty much a warner brothers super smash brothers <clears throat> pretty much and from what i've gathered it's gonna have all your favorite characters from everything from uh, uh dc comics to um uh, scooby-doo and shaggy to bugs bunny uh, they're going to have the Iron Giant in it, apparently. Um, all kinds of really random characters. They're going to have, uh, I think, Jake the Dog from Adventure Time in it, too. And It's I, a lot of stuff. It's, it, it is a lot. So, But I like that they're kind of doing that, though, right? Mm-hmm. Because that's kind of what Smash Bros. did. Like They have, what, over 30, almost 40 characters you can pick from, right? Definitely, and that that's the fun of it, right? Is you're like, who wants, who doesn't want to see Batman beat up Scooby Doo or something? I mean, that's that's not wrong, and they're doing a really good uh, idea with it so far. So originally, whenever I watched the trailer for it or the, some of the gameplay of it, they didn't have, really have any voices on it, but they had some special moves on there, it's just like with Smash Bros. And they're all seeming pretty unique. Um, it's going to be, it looks like it's going to be very similar to Smash Bros. Um, but I'm interested to see how they're going to set it up. Uh, and if the voice acting, if the stages are going to hold up, because I mean, you've got a multitude of stages in smash bros and a multitude of items that you can choose from. And I'm not seeing really seeing hardly any items right now. So I think that's just something they're, they're probably workshopping probably. And they really haven't just, they haven't kicked it out to the public right now. So. Yeah, I think they're still working on it. And this kind of reminds me of like the Nickelodeon one they did too, which yeah, was which, called, I think, All, All Star Brawl, I think is what that one was yeah, called. Yeah, big, a big flop of that one was. So not, yeah. as, not as good from what I gathered. But it, but, it looks... I'm, I'm really surprised it's taken so long for some other Smash Brothers type games to take off. I mean, it's been very dominant as a game for a long time. And really, mechanically, it's pretty simple. Like, every oh, character wow. has like, 10 different moves. So I'm reading here. So I, I was way off, James. They have 80 characters you can choose from in Ultimate. <laughs> 80? That sounds about right. I didn't think they, it was that many. Wow. It's got to be kind of extreme. Uh, and that's one problem I have with Smash Brothers Ultimate is they have so many characters now that a lot of them are very, very similar to each other. That's what I was wondering. Because I know... Because you can play people like, like K. Rule seems feels kind of similar to like I don't know pretty I close to like King pretty close to like King DD. 
Yeah. Uh, there's like four different star. There's like four or five different sword guys like Marth and Ike, and they're all pretty much the same. Yeah. And I, the only one that I really kind of thought was unique was they put in, um, Oh, who's the Kingdom Hearts kid? Um, I'm having a brain fart. Oh, Sora. Sora. Yeah. Sora. They put Sora in there and he kind of has a different, uh, aspect where you can switch between like the different magicas mm-hmm. that, uh, that he has. So, I mean, it's different. But he and he plays slightly differently, so but it, it's not like the good old days whenever we remember the first one when it came out on is it sixty four? It came out on sixty four. Mm-hmm. We we maybe have what like twelve twelve, 12 characters. Yeah. yeah, and and they were all very distinct in how they played. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I always had a blast playing that game. I just remember going back. It, it's just it be it, it'll be it will be interesting because right now they have roughly about 15 characters to choose from in the alpha for multiverse. I'm just interested to see if they're going to start small like they did there and kind of slowly build it out. I don't know. I um, think that I think that's what they're going to do. I mean that's that's kind of the way these types of games are going now is that if I were them I would release another character like every 3 to 6 months. Mhm. Maybe every or yeah, something like that, and then new stages and new cosmetics, and try and keep the content flowing. Yeah, kind of keep the hype going. But as of now, it doesn't look like they have a release date for it. I'm guessing it'll probably come out sometime next year. I would think maybe like summertime next year. I would think um, because this is an alpha right now. It's an alpha state, alpha yeah. testing. So it's, it's the big thing for me is going to be like, how is it going to be monetized? Cause there's calling it free to play. And so, well, they've already announced, they already said they're going to have a, they're going to have a battle pass and an in game shop. So there yeah, you go already. It's, if, if it's not super aggressively monetized, then it might be a lot of fun. I don't so. know why you would bring up super aggressively monetized things yet, James. <laughs> You're spoiling it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I would. Well, I'm so sorry. I've got a. I want to. I want to gently dip my toe into the 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 lava level. The lava. The cesspit. The stuck. cesspit. That's Diablo Immortal. But yeah, that is exactly what it is. But for you guys wondering, this game, this multiverse game, will be coming out. It's it's it been announced for the PC, PS4, uh, PS5, Xbox One, the Xbox Series X and S. So right now, that looks like the main. I mean, it's going to all platforms except for the Switch, which I would not assume. I would never assume that Nintendo would let something like this go onto their platform and compete against the uh, Smash Bros. <laughs> if there's one thing we've learned about Nintendo is that if the price tag gets high enough, they will eventually cave and do it. Yeah, I mean, I mean they even let Fortnite on. Um, <laughs> uh, don't get me started we'll with that. But yeah, that that's that is pretty yeah, much cross, all. We... Cross platform is the name of the game these days. <sighs> if you want to create like a sensation, then they want to have everyone playing. You, you better everywhere. tell Nintendo that because they're definitely. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. They're they're definitely like to stay in their own little world. So we we shall see. But all right. So next story. Um, how we're gonna do the the PS Plus. Uh, online stuff versus the Xbox Game Pass. Yeah, so, we talked about PS Plus a little bit last month, I think. We, we did. Um, so we at like that the point... They had like three different subscription levels. And... Yeah. So you remember a little bit about it, um, just from the subscription levels and things like that. Was this something that originally kind of interested you or not, seeing as we neither of us... Well, I think what we had talked about before was like the... They had like three different subscription levels. One was basically just online access. Like one, the second level got you access to their library. And the third one was supposed to get you access to like some actual like, you know, newer games. Yeah. And like the cost was similar to the Xbox service. I remember like our consensus was that it just sounds like they're trying to get in on the same market idea. Yeah. So essentially what they've got set up is like you were saying, they've got the PS plus essentials, which is, the base it's it's basically uh uh games of the month for Mm -hmm. playstation it costs ten dollars a month and sixty dollars a year which is like you said you get the two free games a month you get the online multiplayer features cloud storage and discounts uh the now what we're talking about the additional two tiers that they've added was ps plus extra which is 15 a month or a hundred dollars a year which everything before but also gives you uh up to 400 downloadable PS4 and PS5 games. Uh, that actually interested me, interests me quite a bit because if it's some of the bigger titles they've released for the PS5 and PS4, I would be down. That's because if I can download them on my computer, I would be 100% with it. If I'm streaming them, 
and I will probably I will probably wait until they make that available. Uh, the final version, though, the the PS Plus Premium, which was eighteen dollars a month or one hundred twenty a year, um, adds an additional uh, three hundred forty games uh, from the PlayStation, PlayStation Two, PSP, PS Three, and PS Four eras, which they. I guess they're saying right now this is the only this is that's the streaming portion that they're really talking about, which, man, I don't know what it is. I don't. I'm just not a huge fan of streaming the games, unless it's something that where latency isn't a big a bit as much of an issue. But if I was playing, I remember I was playing one game a while back on the Game Pass even, and it was just a little bit of lag and it kept killing me. I kept on dying because I kept on kept on getting shot and it just made me angry. So I yeah, I'm not a huge fan a of this. Bit. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the streaming game idea because, like you said, um, double the latency, double the input, and it's yeah. like, well, I maybe this just makes me a curmudgeon, but like I already have a PC that can run anything. Like, yeah, so I, why I wouldn't already you got a machine? Why don't I want to just run my own games? Yeah, so why wouldn't you just add an additional bit of software that I have to download and I just emulate it onto my computer, right? Yeah, I mean. The the upside to the streaming thing is, of course, you can play it on Windows. That's a hardware. Yeah. Or it's hardware that's not designed to do it. So, like, you can stream, like, on the Xbox service, you can stream quite a few Xbox games onto your, like, smartphone and play. But then, of course, you've got interface issues unless you want to carry around uh, a controller. A controller to, <laughs> to go. <laughs> oh, God. Which, I don't know. If I was a 15 year old teenager and I had a, you know, a 20 hour car ride to look forward to, maybe the streaming service would sound pretty good. No, right. James. I, I'm going to bring my old school Game Boy with the little light and the little like, but the head takes like eight trip or eight double A batteries, James. Every car way ride and it dies like not no, even two no, hours no. in. You know what I'm talking Am- about? Am- amateur. We we used to do laptops with a I, Game Boy emulator and we'd play I, them at three hundred percent speed. <laughs> I do remember that actually. <laughs> That was definitely, those were some fun car rides. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, it definitely made things go by fast. I'll tell you that right now, but it was fun. Yeah. So I, I don't know if, if they can ever get, cause that's what, if they can ever get it to, to sync up properly, which I understand like why they're going to that, because they want to make the games and their environment as accessible as possible, which is why Xbox is, is our uh, Xbox is really pushing this, um, dongle thing. Have you seen these now? They're basically, it's like, hey, you you want to stream your Xbox games for Game Pass? Here's a dongle. It costs you, you know, $20, $15, whatever it is. And all you have to have to do is have a game controller that will connect to it and it streams it straight to your TV. Yeah. And we have everything off site, which, cool. Well, it, it's kind of fitting into this whole, this new marketing thing, which we've talked about a lot of times with these streaming services, is it's more like a, you're renting the games, you're not owning them now. Yeah. It's like, it's, uh, the content libraries have gotten very large, and so now it's like, well, we don't buy DVDs, you pay for a Netflix subscription, and you watch the shows whenever you want to watch them. And, like, they're trying to go that direction with video games, too, where you have to stay plugged into their their service in order to continue accessing your games. So I- I can understand it, right? So that's kind of like that's just a that's just a, I guess you know, advancement in technology, right? And it's it's a little bit more it's it's cheaper for them to do, I would assume, because they're essentially just holding on to the information and sending it to you whenever they want, whenever you want it, and you're not also not like covering your walls with thousands of DVDs. I mean, well, it also keeps you plugged into their process, right? So like yeah. even on the Game Pass, for example, when for the record, the Game Pass is actually remarkably nice about this, but and we're going to talk about this more with Diablo Immortal later. Mm-hmm. But whenever I load up the Game Pass to access my my essentially rented library of games, what does it do? I have to look at banner ads of all the new games that came up. I get to see all the recently added games, the games that I am playing, all of their add-ons and you know uh, add-on packs and expansions and things are all there for cash. And so in order to access my games, I have to walk past all the advertisements, as it were. I mean, it's it's kind of like real life, right? You know, you, you drive down the highway and you see 800 billboards or you get bombarded with, you know, emails that have nothing to do with anything you want. Like you signed up one time for that one email access or for one access to one website and you still get emails 
you know, to this day from something that you don't well, even remember. Exactly. That's the whole point, right? It's, or if you go to Walmart and you're going to go buy a cabbage for dinner, what do you have, <laughs> what do you have or, or whatever, or some apples for your kids or whatever, what do you have to walk by on the way back to the register? You've got to walk past all the potato chips, all the cookies, the rotisserie chickens, and the candy uh, bars. I like the rotisserie <laughs> chickens. I could probably stop and buy one of those. <laughs> I would I would be down with that. But, it, I mean, that's just a marketing ploy. And I'm, as long as they keep it like this, I will be okay with, with Microsoft being like that. Oh, yeah. The Xbox uh, One is great. This is very minimal. I don't want to say this I is know. a criticism to the Xbox One. But it's just it's part of the whole rental library experience. It keeps you in their system. Yeah. So that is one of the things I'm interested to see whenever the PlayStation Plus stuff starts to come out. And are they going to inundate us with some the similar things? Or are they going to start putting pushing up ads? Because that is one thing that irritates the living crap out of me, uh, especially with things like Spotify. Like I love, I mean, I love Spotify because it's free. And I have, I've basically been on it for almost, you know, 15 years and I was even listening on it whenever it first started. And you could listen as much as you want on desktop, whatever it was. And they'd give you like an ad maybe once every like, you know, 30 minutes or something like that. But now, like if I sit there on my desktop app with it, these ads are constantly popping up and blocking what I'm when I like if I'm looking for an app or a, 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 a song or whatever it is to, to add to my library that I really like. It's like, hey, did you try the new Peloton workout? And I'm like, what are you trying to call me, fat? And they're like, hey, try this new diet. It's great for you. Hey, have you tried the new uh, uh, Bose headphones? And I'm like, good God. I'm like, leave me alone. <laughs> it is so irritating. It's almost to the point where it's like, if they start doing, if they were, if they do stuff like that, I will straight up not want to do it. <laughs> I, I, it irritates the living crud out of me. So, well, that's just, I don't know. No, I agree 100%. And as far as like the Game Pass itself goes, I think it'll be interesting for PlayStation and Xbox, which one's going to end up coming out on top if there is a winner. Well, that's a thing, a- Xbox owns a lot of studios. but And they, they've been clearly positioning themselves for this for a long time. Now, PlayStation has some much-loved titles. Well, kind obviously, of like Nintendo does. but Well, yeah. Well, here's I a few just, of them, right? You yeah. got You got Demon Souls, uh, Ghost of Shushima, uh, Shushin, uh, uh, Shishima, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Last of Us Remastered, Gravity Rush Remastered, Last Guardian, Tokyo Jungle. You have, you, they're even putting Va- uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is the newest Assassin's Creed on there. They have all these big ones on there. I just remember, like, with the Xbox service last fall, they started with a big splash. Because remember, like, when they first launched that summer, mm-hmm. we got some big name games. Like, Psychonauts 2 was their day one. Yeah. And then there was like nothing for like six or eight months. And they are just now starting to pick up with the games again on the Game Pass the last month or two. And I think, I think that it's, and that I'm, was I'm worried that PlayStation's doing the same thing. They're going to front load it to get people on board and then try and find content later. Yeah. That's, that's why I'm hesitant. I want to kind of, I'm thinking I'm going to wait just a tiny bit just to see what it does. Because to be fair though, too, I haven't. I don't have a lot of free time <laughs> as much as I did. I don't, I'm not working nights, so I don't have. I can't stay up all night and just play video games when I want. But so I'm going to wait a little bit and kind of see uh, how it goes. Well, um, and I can see myself alternating services. Like, there's no need to be subscribed to all of them. No, I can no, drop. No. I can drop the Xbox and pick up PlayStation for a few months. Yeah, play some old games that I missed out on, whatever. And then whenever the next hotness comes out on Xbox, switch back. No, absolutely. Like I, I, I will. I totally agree, man. Like I will probably hop on it at some point if they release the whole whole thing of uh, of Assassin's Creed Valhalla because I love that game. That's that's one of my favorite ones ever. Uh, just to see it, um, like take it back. I haven't played that. I played the last one. I I, I wanted. I want to play it just because I, I think I like I like those kinds of games though. But I and, really and, and enjoyed. I really liked back Black Flag, and I heard Valhalla is similar to Black Flag. So and, I, I and do for play the it. fact that you could literally pay fifteen dollars, play it for an entire month, and just be like, "Toodles," it's cheaper than buying the game. Still, it's and that's why I've kept the Game Pass. Is like I think I have more than got my money's worth. Oh, absolutely, in various games. So, well, I did cancel mine. A, a, you know, a few months back, just because I, w- I hadn't gone on in like six months, probably. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, I just need a, I need to drop it, so I'm not wasting the money, and, and then I'll, I'll pick it back up whenever it comes back up. But yeah, yeah. I'll, well, we will have to see. And if you guys 
you know, enjoy it more than, you know, we think that we're going to enjoy it. If you guys get it before us, let us know how you like it and kind of uh, shoot us your thoughts and your opinions on it. So, all right. So kind of continuing the PlayStation, uh, you know, theme as it were. So they just came out with a state of play for the June of 22 and they, they announced quite a, a hefty load of games. Nothing that really like makes me, you know, scream and go crazy. Uh, Most of these are old games or yeah, indie or, games that are indie games that are coming to their console for the first time. Yeah. But. I think the only one that really kind of the only thing that really piqued my interest was the simple fact that they've got they basically announced that uh, the PSVR two is going to be a thing that they're going to be pushing pretty heavily. It looks like, mm-hmm. um, I mean, they've got. It looks like they're doing a, a re. Uh, they're putting a uh, a VR version of Resident Evil Village in, uh, which I don't know if you ever played any of the, the Resident Evil Village, but it looked pretty fun. I kind of want to get into it, but I was kind of hoping it would come to game pass at some point to play but i i don't think that's gonna be an issue but is there anything on this list that really kind of i mean pops? the big announcement was really the final fantasy 16 <laughs> but that's, yeah uh, that's still it's been announced but it's still not coming out till next summer probably on the bright side though you could probably end up playing uh the spider-man remastered because they've got a pc port coming to that hopefully they put that on uh the not game pass the ps online stuff which that would be worth getting because i heard the i heard the uh spider-man game for the ps5 was amazing so it was choice dude i i put so many hours that think basically assassin's creed but with spider-man so much fun so much fun the dynamic of it was really fun so i'm interested to see what they do what they have going in here because like i said they they did put some dates and stuff on it but like i said it just really looks like they're they're going to be pushing this VR2 stuff here pretty heavy. Like, got the new Street Fighters coming out, which I'm not a big Street Fighter fan. It looked cool, but I'm, I am I don't foresee anything, like, even no, me dipping really my toe into that. I'm not a big fighting game guy other than Smash Bros. Uh, yeah, I don't even know what... Tunic is great, but I already played that on the PC. I said, I mean, if you want to get the trophies for it again, you could probably do it again. <laughs> I mean, that's the only reason I would even play it again on the PlayStation, uh, unless it's free on the new one. But uh, yeah. I've heard people starting to talk about the Callisto Protocol. Um, yeah, it that sounds looked... like it's uh, it might be the new Dead Space. It's, yeah, uh, so I think it's Glenn, on... Glenn Schofield, who previously helped co-create Dead Space, yeah. is in on this. So Dead Space yeah. fans might pay attention to that one. It's on Steam already. I watched the trailer for it because I saw that they had announced it for playstation and i was like oh what's that that seems interesting so i watched the trailer for it on steam it, it looks absolutely terrifying um <laughs> i i am not a man that enjoys uh jump scare games uh or scary games in general but it reminds me of that kind of that dead space vibe i, I just like that that realm and that lore about it um it's not quite a Alien Isolation type game, but it's definitely more mm-hmm. that Dead Space. Because did you ever play Alien Isolation at all? I never played that one. I watched people play through Dead Space a couple times, but yeah, it's it's definitely more of a Dead Spacey type game. I like I just like the worlds that they build those in. But but yeah, that's those are a few of the games that they've got coming out. Um, I, I can't really think of anything that really strikes my fancy on that. But um, if they announce anything else, we'll probably bring that to you guys and let you guys know. All right, next story. This one I actually thought was really funny. I'm going to give a shout out to one of our friends, actually. Uh, Shana, if you're listening to this, thanks for letting us know about it. Uh, (laughs) This is the Dead by Daylight dating sim. Um, It's called Hooked on You, uh, a Dead by Daylight dating. Uh, It is, it looks hilarious. It's essentially, if if you guys have... uh, play any dead by daylight dead by daylight by the way guys uh it's essentially a four like a 4v1 it's kind of getting that vein where one of you plays a a kind of like a a serial killer or like a a mass murder kind of person Mm -hmm. and the other four of you are like the little college kids that decided hey we're gonna go take you know camp out in the in the in the woods and you have to basically have to survive until daylight right yeah, it's one of those asymmetric games. Like yeah. um, Evolution was one of those too, where 
yeah, there's a monster and there's a team of people who are trying to fight the monster. Yeah. And so for this, it's they literally took that <laughs> those those characters and they're like, you know what would be cool? Let's make a dating sim out of that. <laughs> <laughs> it looks hilarious. So you literally have all these buff looking guys in like swimsuits, but they have like like a like a Freddy or a Freddy face or a Jason mask on and stuff like that. And you're just they, like, is they look this? like Jojo. They look like Jojo characters, honestly, to me. That's that's why it's funny, James. It's, it's hilarious. hilarious. It's hysterical. <laughs> I, I'm interested to see what this, what, how this does, because I was telling you earlier about the other game I had actually played and it was very similar kind of like to this. It's called, um, I, mean, I think it was called, uh, 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 hot dad dating sim or something like that it's just, it's kind of that idea it's just like these dads are just like all these dads have different personalities but they're just extremely good looking dads and you have to kind of like weave through them as another dad who's not so great looking it's really funny but it's like who thinks of this like shit dream, like dream daddy a dad dating simulator that's what it was yeah and i, I was just like this is this is bonkers but it's it's i like those games every once in a while when they're satirical um but I'm not one for them. Like the pigeon, like the pigeon dating sim. That was hilarious. Well, yeah. And a lot of these dads have a dad bod too, which is nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Makes me feel better about myself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm interested to see when that one comes out, uh, if I'm going to grab it or not. A little part of me kind of hopes it could throw them game pass. If not, I'll probably wait till it goes on sale. Unless it's just like amazingly good. It might um, be one just to pick your favorite streamer and watch it. Honestly, maybe. Yeah. We'll <laughs> that see. That might be what I do. We'll see. <laughs> All right, finally, we're going to get into the nitty, dirty, dirty, nasty bit of news. The Diablo Immortal. Is it trash? Is it good? Is it a little bit of both? Let's get your initial thoughts on this, James. let's, Let's do this. Can you describe what Diablo Immortal is for people that do not know what it is? So... Diablo Immortal was infamously announced in 2018 at BlizzCon. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have ever watched the clip of that. It's a piece of internet history. You definitely need to watch it. Where instead of of announcing Diablo 4, they announced a Diablo mobile game and got booed off the stage. Everyone's got a phone, James. (laughs) It's like, what, do you guys not have phones? Yeah, It was the most incredibly tone deaf. It was like the first Activision Blizzard thing when they got bought out that was like, clearly an activision thing and not a blizzard thing oh absolutely and instead of uh, progressing their core franchise they decided that they oh we're just going to make a mobile game instead which to be fair to them the mobile game um market is like 10 times pc and console put together it's yep. absolute insane how much money people spend on mobile. got games. those whales in there man got those whales and the cb deep is all i gotta say but oh my god anyway this is a diablo game made for mobile they Mm -hmm. did eventually place it on pc as well it came out this week um first impression is that it is a genuinely pretty fun game which has been incredibly over monetized it it is horrific i will Um, 100 percent agree with you on that (laughs) we're going to talk about it at length if you guys are interested there's a youtube channel called joss strife hayes And he made a video called The Immoral Design of Diablo Immortal. It's got almost a million views, and it's only two days old. Yep. I would take an eye on that one. It's like an hour-long video, but it uh, definitely covers the issues. It it, it will will definitely dive a little quite a bit deeper probably than we do. But Mm -hmm. I will have to say uh, right off the bat, I I did put a little bit of time into this just because I told myself, you know – I'm going to give it a fair shake because I, I, this was like the day it announced, you know, they pushed it and they said, Hey, you pre-registered for this. Would you want to download it and be ready for it tomorrow? I'm like, sure. Why not? I can play Diablo on my phone. Let's see how it goes. I played for 45 minutes and I already knew, I already knew that I was going to un- uninstall this game, James. <sighs> That's a shame. Isn't that sad? Like, so my initial impressions of it were looks gorgeous. Mm-hmm. plays um, very well even on my crappy crappy phone mm-hmm. um the systems they have set up in it as in regards to like the rpg style our, our, our rpg mechanics great that that's good they have enough classes they have enough different you know uh, uh abilities that you can pick from 
the armor and stuff is great because it allows you to, you know, you know, enhance your character much like they do in Diablo, you know, mm-hmm. two and three. That's great. I expected that. The thing that immediately turned me off from it, like the minute they started introducing it, was the gem systems. Mm-hmm the insane amount of monetization that you that it was obviously that you had to pay to win in this game like it's just clear as day watching that mm-hmm. there's no way you can get around it um actually there was a like like james was saying go watch that guy's video he goes a lot more in depth than <laughs> but it's clear to get any sort of edge on anyone during the pvp stuff or to get an edge on the high, the the higher level PVE stuff. You are going to have to sink. I'm not talking just hundreds of dollars. You will probably sink thousands of dollars into this game to get well, where you and, need to be. And actually, there's a streamer who's been trying to do that. He has uh, With like ten grand or something like that. He's put like ten grand into the game so far and hasn't found a single tier five gem that's like the top level gem. Yeah. What is that? What does that? What does that say? What does that? What does that even say about this game? What like, and so it'd be interesting to know what the chance of getting different items are. And Diablo Immortal has stepped around a lot of laws this way. So yes. for people who are familiar with online gaming and stuff, or who don't live under a rock, most games feature loot boxes these days. Mm-hmm. And not the U.S., but many countries have laws that if you're going to feature a quote-unquote gambling mechanic like a loot box, you have to publish the rates or the chances of acquiring the actual items. Think- um, in particular, China is a big market that requires that, which is nice because we get to find out what these things are. And Diablo Immortal has ever so slightly sidestepped this and expect this to become a thing, where they have the Rift system is essentially a loot box mechanic. You purchase these premium uh, rift keys, these keystones, and Mm -hmm. you apply them to the rift, and then you get a higher chance or guaranteed drops. But because there's a gameplay element, it's not a loot box anymore, therefore it's not gambling. You have purchased a game item. Yes. And so they have not published the chances of getting any of these things. And they've already gotten like preemptively banned in like at least three countries. (laughs) Yeah. Like they, 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 the minute they announced, what was going to happen or like how they were going to do things. Like you said, three, three countries. I think uh, most of them were in that uh, Eastern Europe. I think there's Norway, Sweden, and there's another one up in there around that area that they, mm-hmm. they've already kind of had, they passed legislation already about this stuff. And they basically yeah. were like, no, the way they had this stuff written, they would have had to basically rewrite how they did the drops and everything for those specific countries and Blizzard was like, no, nah, we're good. We're not going to release in that country. That's too much work. Yeah. I'm like, are you serious? Like, No, the, the game guys have said they have counted 20 different in-game, sorry, 22 different in-game currencies. That's ridiculous. To keep track of. There is at least six or eight different progression systems. So it's not just your character's level. There is like almost a dozen different progression systems and little reward systems. And it is carefully designed so that you do not know what exactly is going on or what any particular thing costs at any given time. You just kind of log in and then you see a little red dot that says, hey, you've earned a reward. And mm-hmm. then you start clicking accept and then you get the dopamine rush for hitting all the buttons. I don't know what you're talking about, James. They, would never, they would never treat us like animals <laughs> that just go for dopamine rushes. What are you talking about? You don't know where it came from. You don't know how you earned it. You don't know what happened, but you got some stuff for doing a thing. It's just, it just, it just boggles my mind. What, what I know what people went through, what, what went through their brains when they said this, they saw dollar signs and mountains of gold is what they saw. And they're like, people will pay for this. And I just, uh, like you said earlier, this. this is, this is a 100% a, an Activision move. Like they well, were basically me, like, this you're going to make this. To me, this is like the death of Blizzard. This, to me, is like this is such an antithesis to everything they ever stood for. And yeah. I know we've talked poetic about the old Blizzard back in the day that doesn't really exist anymore a lot, but no, Blizzard used to be a group of frustrating seller tellers. It was games first, and 
this is nothing like Blizzard. No, not at all. And it, it and it makes me a little sad, right? Because I see something where I look at the game and I go, this looks like it would be fun. It honestly mm-hmm. looks like it would be fun. The systems that they have are very similar to like Diablo 3, a little bit in Diablo 2. But they have, like I said, they just they went all out for that money grab, man. And I just... That's like sticking an entire lemon in somebody's mouth and telling them, "Hey, it's 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 freaking lemonade. Enjoy it, right?" You can't you can't do that to somebody and expect them to not like rear back because they've got a sour taste in their mouth, right? Well, and it's not just that it's expensive; like it's designed to get you addicted. Yeah, it's like there's daily login mechanics where you have to log in, and guess what? Those daily login rewards you have to go to the cash shop to claim them. Mm-hmm. So you have to go past the cash prizes every single day to claim your daily login rewards. Like you have to log in every day or you lose stuff. Something people have been talking about is they have like this, uh, they don't have a battle pass. They also have this, uh, this big like loot pass reward where you buy mm-hmm. it, but you have to log in every single day to get it. And if you miss a day, you miss your rewards. Yep. But if you read the fine print, they don't just have rewards for logging in each day. They also have rewards for cumulative login days that accumulate. And those carry over between passes. And so if you miss a day, then, well, you just have to buy the next pass or else you're wasting days. I guess it's, it's, it's really, really, it's really, really bad. Yeah. And I'm sure they're going to make a ungodly amount of money off of some really uh, nice people. But Well, I wouldn't call them nice. I would call them dumb if they're going to put this much money into a game. But that's me, though. I'm I'm cynical. And I think if you cannot clearly see that this is just a massive money suck to like latch on to somebody that has nothing better to do than waste this money. Or God forbid it's a kid playing and their parents don't even know about it, you know, and they're, but then again, if your kid is playing this game and he's spending your money and you don't know about it, you've got a whole other issue on your hands, but that's besides the point. <laughs> it's, it's, I just, I just see that they're going to, they're, they're going to cause a lot of, they're going to add an additional amount of, ill will onto themselves that they really don't need. And, and, well, like... and so here you go. According to app magic, Diablo immortal has already made 15, sorry, $14.5 million in revenue Jesus. in its first week on iOS and Android alone. I hope it tanks in the and, next week. Uh, more than 10 million people have already downloaded the game across PC and mobile, which for reference, Diablo three got 6.3 million copies in its first week. Now, the game market's getting bigger every year, so it's hard to compare those type of numbers, but this is crazy. It's absolute insanity. Well, like you said, though, too, it's also available to so many people that just don't have PCs like we do. Like, so you're talking like huge, the, the Asian market, like most of those folks over there, most of them don't have PCs. All of them have phones, though. Mobile you know? gaming is huge in asia it's also huge in the u.s amongst the younger crowd which i know that's not really our cup of tea but like you know the zoomers are more likely to play on mobile a lot than people are hr so it's don't me get me wrong i'll i'll hop on every once in a while and play like a little like wordle or something like that but like i don't think i ever get on my phone to play a game you know it's it's usually like Oh, this is for information and calling and connecting with people, you know? Well, it's not just like what the phone is for, but it's also like, when do I use, when do I game? I game when I'm at home or with friends, Yeah. but I'm sitting down and I'm gaming and that is my choice to do that. Yeah. To me, mobile gaming is something that you do in transit. Like if you're riding the bus or if you're on the train. Mm-hmm. Or if you're at a dinner with your family and you want to ignore them, like I, <laughs> I say, these are things that I just don't do in my adult life because we live in you know rural U.S. and so we drive ourselves. We don't take public transit. Yeah, I whenever I am, I don't have like I'm old enough that I don't feel the need to isolate myself from my family. No. Like it's, I just when would I be doing that? There's, I have no idea. <laughs> It's, if, it's, I, if I lived in Chicago and I had a thirty-minute bus ride every day, then I could probably be—I'd probably be a mobile gamer. Oh, but. No, absolutely, I, I could see that because you know. And there are some people that it just, it just clicks with. Like I know, like one of our friends, she plays 
a ton of Candy Crush. I see her play it all the time, and I'm like, mm-hmm. cool, you know, good for her. If she, if she enjoys that and that's her release, that's great. But I I just, if I'm sitting down, like I'm, I'm the same boat as you. If I'm sitting down with my friends, I'm either, and I want to play games, I'm going to come over to your house, or you're going to come over to mine, or we're going to sit down and we're going to have dedicated time where we sit in front of our computers and we play overcooked and scream like maniacs or whatever mm-hmm. it is, you know, we're going to, we're going to basically interact with each other. I just can't just imagine sitting there on my phone playing a game for 45 minutes. I just, I can't do that. But then again, like you said, it's just a different attitude, I think. And it's because it, of different generations. And I think, I think kids will end up be, being more like us at a certain point when they get older. But right now they're so just so hooked on their, their phones so, which is another reason why I never will never download TikTok ever, <laughs> ever. So, well, I, mean, it's, I think it's just sort of a thing, right? Whenever you're younger, you're a teenager, you're focused more on your peers. Yeah. Your phone is your gateway to your peers whenever you are not with them. And so I can, I can understand how your phone becomes the focus of your attention in your life. You can see that. But. Well, James, anyway, I'll, back to Diablo. I'll, back to Diablo Immortal. No, it's, it's okay, James. If I ever, if I ever want to focus on my peers, I just come under your, over your house and I just cuddle with you. Okay. Uh, it'll be wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> Though I've got to say, John's a pretty good cuddler too. So you have some competition. I'm going but... to I'm going to have him back <laughs> off. He ain't got to get near my man. <laughs> so, anyways, but so that's that's roughly kind of what we feel about Diablo Immortal. If you guys feel something different, just let us know. Uh, I would love to have a discussion a little bit more on this, maybe go a little bit more in depth on it at a later date, but those are just kind of our, you know, surface level, I, you know, feelings of it. So. Get, my, I'm not saying that if you're not, if you're having fun playing the game, then play the game. Everyone can yeah. have fun their own way. My problem is that the game was clearly designed from the dam from the ground up to get people addicted and extract maximum amount of cash. Yes. Like, I don't begrudge a game company making money off of video games. That's obviously what makes the whole system keep going. Yeah. But this is just ridiculous. Yeah, makes me cringe a little bit. So, well, into some happier news of things that yes. are coming that are going to make me smile and cackle with glee, like a little, little evil, evil genius. Mm-hmm. Um, movie and anime news: uh, Rick and Morty is getting a ten-episode anime. What do you think about this, James? This, this I, sounds I'm amazing. Kind of excited. I mean, Rick and Morty's awesome. I'm not sure, like what a Rick and Morty anime would look like compared to the Rick and Morty show. I mean, the animation <laughs> style, obviously Rick and Morty already kind of had like the big eyes, some of those tendencies to it. Did you, did you see the one they did? Um, they kind of hinted, did a little bit of it um, a while back, but they, they did like a brief little like snippet. I think maybe like a, like a two or three minute, like short where, uh, a Rick is like a Ronin. It's pretty fun, and, and 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 Morty's with them. It's it's like a real brief thing that they barely did. Um, I think that kind of like they they just threw that out there to see if it was going to get any traction, and it, it apparently blew up the internet for a couple of days. And people are like, "Oh, this is this is getting enough traction." So why, let's see if anybody's interested in making this. <laughs> oh, of course, somebody. I, mean, I think it'd be entertaining. More power to them. Uh... Yeah, I think they said that. Um, I'm gonna butcher this gentleman's name. I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, Shung Hu Park. Uh, apparently, he directed God of High School. Um, he's gonna be. Uh, did I say that wrong? Yeah, he's he's gonna be directing those. So it'll be interesting to see um, what they what they do with that. Oh, I apologize. No, he's doing the Ninja Kamui. Uh, I apologize. Uh, you know, Sano. He did Tower of God, which I watched that one on Crunchyroll was... the other day, and it was actually a very good adaptation of the comic. Oh yeah. Sorry, I apologize. That yeah, yeah. That's that's what they're going to be doing. And it looks like they're going to be doing telecom animation, which is they did like Loop on the Third. Um, looks like they're going to be producing it or pushing it out on their ser- uh, out on their uh, so it'll probably I would be I would be interested to see if this is going to become to come to Crunchyroll if it's just going to straight oh it's going to be it's going to premiere on Adult Swim and HBO okay yeah. so at least I'll be able to catch it on HBO that'd be fun so mm-hmm. and you could watch it on be, HBO too yeah so I'd be interested to see I want to see that really bad I like I like that hopefully it's kind of got that snarky kind of you know wit about it so Mm -hmm. um in less happy news uh since uh they decided to make things another studio has decided to cut their animation studio so netflix 
this is back yeah, uh, no surpri- last month. No surprise on this one, but well, yeah, they're they're leaking money hard on the animation studio, uh, honestly. So they laid off 150 employees, most in the U.S. But it looked like about I think they said about 80 of them were uh, were in the animation department. I'm sorry, 70 of them were in were in the animation division. So so they laid off 70 people. To be fair, though, watching the amount of like animation stuff that they've pushed out in the last six months, it's it's slowly gone downhill. Um, well, and I don't know that this is even necessarily about the quality of the animation they were making. I think this no, is I'm just, just... I'm talking about quantity, like the, the amount of animation that they pushed out. So. Yeah, I think they're just tightening their belts. I mean, Netflix uh, lost like 200,000 subscribers yeah. from January to March. And then they were hoping to gain two and a half million during that time frame. And I think this is just a statement about all the streaming services popping up. The streaming oh, yeah. wars are a real thing now. Oh yeah. Between well, they, Dis, Dis, I think Disney, HBO, Disney's giving them a run. Netflix, for they've all taken a, I mean, Hulu. It's all taken a chunk out of the pie. And I think this is we we've seen this before in a lot of other industries, right? There's going to be a proliferation where. By the end of a couple of years from now, we'll have a dozen different streaming services, and then they're all going to die off until there's two or three left. Yep. And we're in the expansion part of things, and so Netflix, which was the early giant, is suffering a little bit right now, Mm -hmm. and they're tightening their belts up, and they did that by laying off 2% of their employees. Well, they also did that by... uh, (laughs) They also increased their prices, and they're talking about putting out a lower-priced, ad-driven subscription as well now like hulu does where you can buy a low tier subscription with did ads. you did you did you also catch the thing that they're talking about putting on uh region blocked basically not region blocked account blocks basically you're not allowed to share your account with other people or they would charge you more essentially i'm like mm-hmm. how would they do that but apparently they're, apparently they're gonna try and they're they're rolling it out slowly to see if it will work well, and that I'm was like, one of the core things you paid for when you buy the higher tier Netflix accounts is yeah. sharing with your family. Yeah, and I, I mean, don't know how it's going to be difficult to police that. Like, I, I mean, I mean, like, how, what what are you what are they going to do? Like, it makes I don't, I don't see how they would even do it because I think you're gonna. It's another one. Was, it's kind of a Blizzard thing. It's like you're just you're kind of money grabbing, and I get you're trying to. They're trying to you know, increase profits and keep, you know, stabilize a little bit. But if you keep like adding these additional features and charging people more money and requiring, not allowing them to basically stretch that dollar where we're already having problems in the economy, you're going to lose a lot. People are going to say, this is not a necessity for me. I'm going to cancel this. Yeah. And I think this is just uh this is a typical syndrome you see in these big businesses, right? The behavior that let them become awesome is not the same behavior that will keep them that way. No, absolutely. And so like Netflix has been very aggressively expanding for decades now where they're accustomed to regular large amounts of growth. They've like built out their own movie studio to make full feature length films for ungodly amounts of money. Yeah. And all this stuff is supposed to be bankrolled by this increasing growth in subscribers. And now they're seeing things drop off and they're panicking. Yeah. Because, you know, the executives want to keep reporting those growth. They want to keep reporting the big earnings. And Yeah, got to make those stockholders or shareholders happy. So be fair, though, I am one of those shareholders. So <laughs> <laughs> you got shares thing. on Netflix? <laughs> I do. I have shares on a lot of things, to be fair. A lot of a lot of tech and uh, media, I'll be honest with you, which I'm kind of taking a hit right now. I'm sure everybody in that in that area is taking a hit. But anyways, though, I kind of hope that I did see a I do kind of hope with some things that I've seen uh, posted about Netflix's shows that they're coming out like they actually just announced another Castlevania show animated Ooh. show. Yeah, it's literally just like a like a 30 second clip. Um, but it's actually about, uh, and it's not Trevor, is it? It's, uh, who's the next one after, uh, Trevor? It's, um, Richter. They're going to do Richter. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I like his storyline quite a bit in Castlevania. So I really, really, I want to see that come to fruition. Will it be as good as the original Castlevania? I will hold my breath and see. That's the first one was pretty awesome. So hopefully the same guy's doing it and it'll be good. And, you know, the simple fact that Jackie enjoyed it and it was quite bloody and violent 
says a lot. So it doesn't seem like Jackie's cup of tea. So that she you know. she enjoyed it. So I was I was pleasantly surprised. So, but on top of that, though, going on to the next story, Netflix is continuing the wave of live action adaptations, and they're going to try and see if they can make another anime live action series work after uh, Cowboy Bebop. Uh, went the way of the dodo. Um, they're going to try and do a uh, live action One Piece series, which we had already kind of heard about this in the wings, but they just released some uh, photos of the sets, actually. And have you seen any of these yet? Have you looked at it yet, James? I've looked at some of the photos. They look gorgeous. I know. I just want to know what they're going to do with those sets after they're done. I hope they sell them to somebody, somebody that's a rich, eccentric person, <laughs> and they put it in a lake somewhere, and we can go visit it. All I, I mean, be. it could just be in a theme park. I mean, make an anime theme park. It'd be awesome. Oh, God. So, yeah, absolutely. I would just make a One Piece theme park, James. I'd probably go just for the heck of it. Because a lot of these sets are gigantic. They're gorgeous. And some of them, like, legitimately float on the one. I haven't said it to where they're actual ships. Like, you Yeah, can... they, they look like the ships from the anime, which is pretty awesome. Well, they even have actual ships that they're using to film some of the stuff on. I was watching some of the video, and it's really cool. So they actually have... Um, I think I cannot say his name uh, correctly. Inaki uh, Gurai. Uh, he's going to play uh, the live action Yuffie, uh, Luffy. Uh, so he, he was kind of doing a tour and kind of showing everybody this kind of stuff. So it looks really fun. Um, they have a lot of the main characters or the big characters set up already cast and whatnot. But I, I do you just kind of the the glimpses that you've seen of this so far do you feel like it's gonna make it where bebop didn't make it so i mean it's kind of hard i know it's for bebop the issue with the bebop adaptation like it wasn't the camera work it wasn't the sets Mm -hmm. like the sets were gorgeous the camera work was good a lot of it felt like an anime the way they did the shots and everything Mm -hmm. the problem with bebop is the director got too big for his britches and decided to change up an already awesome franchise Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, so you take one of the biggest animes ever wrote and your goal is to like reimagine it. Like he should have just adapted it to TV. The reason the reason Cowboy Bebop flopped is because it was a diminishment of the original material. True. It it just it just wasn't good. They introduced themes that weren't in the original. They got rid of stuff that should have been there. The characters didn't feel the same. It just it's a shame. So let me ask like you said, this. Like I said, the, the, the costuming, the the filming, all of that stuff was great. The acting was fine. It was purely, I think, directorial decisions that killed the other one. Now, to me, One Piece is kind of bold because this is like one of the super shonen franchises. It's, it's still going, isn't it? It is it is still going. And so like, I'm not sure. Are they planning just to like, cut a few chunks out of the first season? Are they hoping this is going to be like a forever show they can keep making? Like I, oh, wow, um, that would be bold indeed. Like there's like almost a thousand episodes of One Piece, and granted, like most animes, you can condense those episodes pretty heavily without losing a ton of the content. No, we talking about James. <laughs> there's a ton of per- pertinent information in Dragon Ball Z every episode. There's every a reason episode. that there's a reason Dragon Ball Z Kai was like a fourth of the length of the original. But... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't I, I don't know uh, I to me like the, the best Netflix anime adaptation had still the Death Note one which came yeah. out like in the, the early, early 2000s yeah but uh, I just I don't know how they're going to go with this we'll see the, the, the Cowboy Bebop one was by far the prettiest and it felt the most anime yeah because that's where like the like the Full Metal Alchemist one suffered is that they just weren't able to bring those cartoony elements to life. I will agree with that. Yeah. Now, Cowboy Bebop was, you know, an inherently kind of a grittier, more spacey kind of franchise. Mm-hmm. And now with One Piece, you're getting back towards a bigger kind of cartoonier feel, which they definitely capture the ships. So uh, if they can capture the characters, it'll be interesting. So I, we haven't seen we haven't seen the actors in costume yet. Or even seen any clips of like or like trailers or whatnot of it. So once that starts to pop out, I will probably start to kind of form opinions. 
hopefully, yeah. uh, hopefully positive ones. And I, I'm, a, I'm like you. Um, I will probably wait to see how this feels. This is going to be a forever at show. I guarantee it won't be because Netflix no, never. Be. I mean, even like Stranger Things, that's probably the longest running show that they've ever had. I would think, considering it's got. It's going to have five seasons or like four. It's got, it's got four seasons. The last one's two parts, but most stuff on Netflix doesn't go over four seasons anyways. So I, I have a feeling what they'll probably do is if it does get good reception, it'll probably do like maybe three, four seasons max. And they'll tr- probably condense a lot of the big arcs into that, into those, into like, you know, 30, 40 minute episodes. Mm-hmm. And they'll 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 say bye bye and let it sail off into the sunset towards the prime line, um, and, and 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 then they'll move on to the next thing. And maybe they'll be done with the live action remakes because uh, they don't seem to be. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like they're really hitting the notes like they should in a lot of these shows. So, but that that's why I'm interested to see how they do. Like you said, they they've got that. If they can get, they've got the look so far that I've seen, like I said, but if they can get that anime style where they have the cuts and the way it moves and the dialogue and they stay true to the source material, I think, I think we will be pleasantly surprised. I found a picture of the main actors in costume and uh, the costuming looks pretty good. Oh, good call. I didn't, I haven't found that one yet. So, but it's, the costuming looks, the costuming looks great. So, okay. We'll see. Well, like I said, we'll, like we'll, say, it's it's more the way it flows and the way it moves. If it if it doesn't have that anime feeling to it, then it's not going to really fly. For so people. why waste why waste my time watching a live action <laughs> thing when I could have a thousand episodes where I can waste you know ten years of my life catching up? So yeah, for serious. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so well, guys, that wraps up our news. All the way, I can't say the news segment anymore. Uh, this is our news episode. Uh, before we get skedaddle, uh, James, is there anything else you want to bring up before we get out of here? Because I know we've kind of shot our bolt a little bit. No, that's about it. I know. Well, I appreciate James uh, for you coming back on here. I know you were a little bit other the weather. Weather, you're feeling a lot better though. But uh, mm-hmm. I- I'm glad you were able to come in here and kind of. Uh, kick Diablo Immortal walls down with me <laughs> for a little while at least. So, um, Guys, if there's any news that we missed that you thought we probably should have covered, uh, shoot us an email, sit, uh, hit us up on any of the uh, social media, websites, whatnot, and we will try and bring it up next uh, season. If there's any inaccuracies, I guarantee there's some on my end at the very minimum. Uh, let me know. We'll try and get some corrections in here and there. But again, guys, thanks for coming in and listening to us. James, you ready to head out? Yeah. All right. Off into the stars we go. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye. If you're interested in keeping up to date with new episodes on our channel, add us on any of your favorite podcasting apps or subscribe to our YouTube channel at Seriously Pointless Conversations. If you have questions or concerns, please email us at seriouslypointlessconvo at gmail.com. We appreciate any feedback. Thank you for listening to our show.